Looks like fun, huh? It is. Home-built rotorcraft, helicopters and gyroplanes. Everybody knows what a helicopter is, but gyroplanes are the best kept secret in aviation. What are they and how do they fly? You have to start with this man. Juan de la Sierra. He was a Spanish airplane designer who vowed to make a safe aircraft, and he called it the autogyro. Simply, here's how it works. The engine creates forward motion, which creates wind, which spins the blades and provides lift. The beauty of the design is that any wind will keep the blades spinning. So if the engine loses power, the blades will continue to spin, trading altitude for lift. At the same time in America, another aircraft designer, Harold Pickerin, was working on his own autogyro. Pickerin went to England and met with Sierra. Pickerin was so impressed that he bought one of the autogyros and the American rights. Well, after that, the autogyro really took off. Sierra used an airplane's fuselage. While the rotors created the lift, his autogyro still used the airplane's ailerons, elevators, and rudder to control the direction of flight. Unfortunately, the aircraft had a tendency to roll over on landing. Here's the problem. I'm sitting in the gyro and I'm going to press the rudder pedal. Watch the rudder. Okay, the question is, why aren't I turning? The answer is, there's no air moving across the rudder. That's why most gyros are pushers, so the prop wash will put some air across the control surfaces. Sierra designed a control system that allowed the rotor blades to control the direction of flight. And of course, Pitcairn patented the American rights. During the 1930s, Pitcairn's name became synonymous with autogyros. But this was during the Great Depression. Autogyros became toys for the rich because they weren't very practical. New airplanes could do almost everything the autogyro could do, only faster and cheaper. The autogyro's main claim to fame was its ability to land within its own length. Most autogyros needed a runway to take off. Autogyros were built with jump takeoff capabilities, but the autogyro still couldn't do this. Hover. Or fly backwards. That was left up to this man, Igor Sigorsky. He used Pekarin's patents to build what we know today as the helicopter. By World War II, airplanes were going so fast that autogyros got left in the dust. But both the Germans and English had smaller ideas. The German Navy had a gyro glider towed by a submarine, and the English came up with this one-man glider. They planned to tow infantry soldiers into battle. Neither idea was a big hit, so what happened to the autogyro? It basically evolved into the helicopter. After the war, the English gliders were sent to General Electric. A young engineer there was so impressed with the little gyro, he decided to design and build his own. He called it the gyrocopter. His ubiquitous ads could be found everywhere. Igor Benson set up dealerships across the country and founded the Gyrocopter Owners Group, the popular rotorcraft association. Benson's gyrocopter could be built first as a glider and then motorized. This was to facilitate training. An owner could teach himself to fly the glider and then move up to the motorized gyrocopter. In the golden days of the Benson gyrocopter, self-training was the only choice. Powered two-place gyros didn't exist. The Benson method of self-training was a slow, long-term process that was successful if faithfully followed. Unfortunately, many builders didn't have the patience. Plus, people started building their own designs. If you have low-time, self-taught flyers acting as test pilots, well, the results are predictable. But all the experimenting paid off. New gyro design elements included horizontal stabilizers, drop keels, and standardized control sensitivity. This helped make gyros safer. These things don't make a gyro safe. No motorized vehicle is safe, whether it's a car, a boat, or a motorcycle. And gyros are no exception. 
The most important safety device sits right here. You. Even today, people still think they can teach themselves to fly. Would you try to teach yourself to fly an airplane? And today you have training choices. You can begin on a gyro glider. The glider has two advantages over a power trainer. On the glider, you'll learn how to pad up the blades by hand, and you'll get used to the lighter control feel of shorter blades. However, the glider is no substitute for training in a powered two-place machine. Today, you have the advantage of receiving quality flight training from an FAA certified instructor in a powered gyro trainer. There are gyroplane instructors across the country and the list is growing. And so is the Popular Rotorcraft Association. The PRA has evolved into an organization encompassing all home-built rotorcraft and has chapters across the country and throughout the world. The reasons for joining the PRA are the same as in its beginning. Being with like-minded people to share building experiences, exchange information, and fly. There is also a social aspect to the chapters, a place to make friends with the same interests as you have. The PRA isn't just gyroplanes. Many members fly their own home-built helicopters. The main advantage of a helicopter is its ability to hover, but the ability to hover comes at a price. Here's the difference between a gyroplane and a helicopter. The gyro's engine spins a propeller which drives it forward. The oncoming air comes up through the rotor blades. Remember, the gyro's rotor blades are freewheeling and not connected to the engine. On a helicopter, the engine drives the main rotor, pulling the air down. To do this, though, you need a complex, that means expensive, transmission to drive both the main rotor and the tail rotor. Plus, you have to have a way to change the pitch in all these rotor blades. That makes a helicopter much more complex. More complex means more expensive. And the simpler it is, the cheaper it is. And this is about as simple as it gets. A couple of control rods going to a torque tube, going to a rotor head, which is basically a bearing that lets the rotor spin around. While there are modern certified gyro planes, they are expensive. You'll probably end up building your own gyro from a kit. The gyro plane is the ultimate quick build, home built aircraft. While many airplanes take thousands of hours to construct, some gyro kits can be built in just 50 hours. You'll probably want to spend a little more time and make your gyro a real show machine. One of the main reasons to build your own machine is the cost savings. It's much cheaper to build it yourself. You don't have to be a master mechanic. Most gyro kits come complete with everything you need, including a detailed assembly manual. There are some parts like blades and rotor heads that would be very difficult for the average person to build. In most gyro kits, all the machining has been done for you and the rest of the gyro can be assembled with ordinary hand tools. As the builder, you can make all the cosmetic modifications you desire to make it your machine. You can do all the maintenance yourself without the expense of hiring an aircraft mechanic. Compared to building an airplane, building a gyro is a relatively short, simple process. You'll enjoy the building experience. Well, you'll enjoy most of the building experience. And finally, there's pride. The pride that comes from building it yourself. Remember, you don't have to build alone. Not only will you get help from your kit maker, you can also join the PRA. At your local chapter, you'll join with people who have been through the building process and can offer help, advice, and hands-on expertise. There are two types of home-built gyros, experimental and ultralight. An experimental must be registered with and inspected by the FAA. Of course, to fly an FAA registered aircraft, you must be an FAA licensed pilot and possess a current medical certificate. Getting your ticket is not easy, but the experience you gain will be priceless. But there is an alternative, ultralights. A pilot's license isn't required, nor does an ultralight gyro have to be FAA inspected or registered. But just because you don't need a license doesn't mean you don't need professional flight training. Never forget, this is a real live flying machine with a real live pilot. You. But there are disadvantages to ultralights. You can't fly over populated areas and you are limited to five gallons of fuel. There is also a 254 pound empty weight restriction, which is why most ultralight gyros are open frame designs. These are like aerial dirt bikes, the ultimate fun machine. Even though most gyros are single-seaters like this one, you don't have to fly alone. You can join the PRA and the local chapter in your area because whether you want a relaxing flight in your own personal escape machine or you need a pure adrenaline rush, the PRA has what you're looking for.